Do you ever sit at home thinking to yourself, will I ever achieve anything in this life? Do I even really deserve to? Well, do I have the game for you? Desync is developed by the Foregone Syndicate and is also published by Adult Swim Games. If you know anything about Adult Swim Games, you'll know they tend to put out some pretty fun, arcadey, good games which do pretty well critically, but not very well commercially. Desync has had the same thing happen to it, with the release date being right smack bang in the middle of the Switch release and the Automata, as well as another bunch of big releases. What this means is, the game is about as well known as the certain Connie themed gaming channel. Now, I do really enjoy Desync and it's a fantastic game, but let me just signpost this entire review. Desync is a really hard game to get into. The information is in there, but my primitive penguin brain just couldn't really handle it at all. What this means is, if you don't spend a few minutes online looking beneath the covers of Desync, you will have no idea what's going on, like most people who played the game expecting to have a typical shooter. The first big thing to note about Desync is that the game is gorgeous and the music is beautiful. It's got a soundtrack by Daniel Deluxe, who apparently is fairly famous in the scene. I haven't personally heard of him, but after hearing from him, I want to hear more of him. In addition to this, it also basically looks and feels like Tron, if Tron was about genocide and not Disney tie-in toys. The most important thing about a shooter is obviously the shooting. This game may as well be Columbine, that is to say, very memorable. Each of the guns has a neat design, and they all have two modes of fire, with one being a fairly standard FPS affair and the other being something very out there and unique that I quite enjoy. An example of this is, on a shotgun you'd never really expect to get a saw blade launcher, but that's exactly what Desync provides, and that's probably one of the more tame choices they choose for their gun's secondary fire modes. There's not much else to say here than the guns are just really fun to use and really engaging. You could talk about specifics all day, but at the end of the day, I just like shooting people with them. That's not much complication there. In addition to this, the game also provides you with more tools than just that, with a secondary weapon system in the modules. These take more of a backbench than the other gameplay systems, but they are welcome additions, making the game a lot less simple and formulaic. The biggest part about Desync, though, is the attack sequences. Basically, the way they work is, when you try and kill an enemy, think of it like um, specific ways of killing people, I suppose. If you dash at an enemy and then shoot them in the chest, you perform the aggressor attack sequence. If you shoot them through the air and then shoot them again while they're in the air, while dashing, you perform the aperture attack sequence and the aggressor attack sequence at the same time. There's dozens of these sequences in the game and they all add to your overall score at the end of the level. When you start off the game as a fresh baby boy, you basically have no idea what's going on. Because of this, you mostly just do random attack sequences on accident and just try your best to survive. But once the game has beaten you down, broken you into your core parts and made you cry in the corner for a while, you eventually learn a few off by heart, and those become the cornerstone of you building up your score. This is, just, I think, the best part of the game overall. When you really get engaged in it and start learning attack sequences and trying to play better and better, the game just sort of opens up. I really do enjoy this duality as well, with if you're wanting to just beat the game like in 4 or 5 hours and just get through everything, you can not care about attack sequences too much and just try and beat the game like it's a standard FPS, but once you've gotten through it and you've started, you know, being a cool boy who can pull off all these neat tricks, you can start doing harder and harder attack sequences to get better and better scores, slowly but surely rewarding the player for actually putting time into it. For the first 5 or 6 hours, the game will feel like it's just hitting you in the head again with newspaper and spraying water at you like you're some kind of mangy dog on the side of the street, but once you get past that time, it starts to become really fun. You become Desync's best friend. And that's, you know, pretty sick. I really do enjoy how Desync does difficulty in contrast to the normal hard, in quotation marks, indie game on Steam. Most of those just tend to be bullshit games where you have to find an exploit to sort of abuse until you can beat a level, as opposed to games which are actually hard, meaning that they're hard to master. I think Desync just does this really well, and if you enjoy hard games, you're really gonna enjoy Desync. Other than that, the game has this insane sense of momentum to it. It's basically faster than the same Bolt and Adderall. I don't think there's much else to say here. Some of the game design is a little bit meh though. Um, the ranking system is pretty okay, but I think it has its faults. None of them are important enough to, you know, more talking about for more than 30 seconds, but you know, it could be improved. The level design is also a little bit hit and miss, with a few levels in particular having really, really bad fights. Those could also be improved. You know, some of them just suck to play in. Simple as that. It, the game only has nine levels and three bosses. The bosses, you kind of just learn their tricks in about 30 seconds and you're done with them. So the levels are the main bulk of the gameplay, meaning you'd really, you know, want those to be alright. 
The game also offers aberration levels, which are challenge variants of the base levels. These are even more hit and miss. Basically, you throw in a cool modification every so often, which changes the way the game works, whether that be akimboing weapons, or being slower or faster, or just making the enemy stronger in some way. These are really random, is the easiest way of saying it. While the fights might be the same and the level might be the same, these modifiers just make the game out of whack. It goes from being a, a serial killer on heroin to a homeless man on PCP. One is dangerous and the other is more dangerous but also unpredictable. The unpredictability gets old pretty fast, I'd rather just, you know, beat the level and be done with it because these are mostly just gimmicky in the first place. I think one bad thing of note is the achievement hunting in this game. It takes a really long time to get all of them, but the game does hand them out like they're free candy. I did some quick math, after 9 hours of playing this game I had more achievements than in 19 years of being alive. Here's the list, the list checks out, and there you go. Almost every attack sequence in this game has its own achievement, and you don't really find those by playing well, you just play th find them by experimenting. Which means that if you want to get all the achievements, you're gonna have to basically not play better, but play more retarded. Doesn't really feel that good. Last point, the customization is kind of terrible in this game. You can put these shards on your weapons to make them better in specific ways, but you can never really feel in what ways your guns are better. I've put maximum damage on my pistol and it could be basically the same thing and it wouldn't really make a difference. Like, I have no idea what's going on here, you know. Desync really rewards customizing your, your character and, you know, having your own playstyle, but these really fall short. However, I feel like the customization is pretty good with the imbue system. The way those work is if you perform a specific attack sequence on special enemies, you can steal power-ups. And that's a really cool way of doing power-ups, I think, making it not just picking them off the ground. That being said, it's a bit, you know, a mixed bag again. That could be said for basically everything in desync, which is in the main gameplay. It's mostly a mixed bag. Overall, in terms of actually buying this game, it's... We have to trudge through the wasteland of mediocrity for a very long time. Kind of like how you're doing with this channel, actually. That's not for everybody, obviously. You could have a lot more fun in the first 6 hours of another game on Steam, which cost $13, very easily. That was a strange sentence, I hope I got the point across. What I'm trying to say is, desync isn't going to be the most fun for you if you're not willing to break a few teeth on the way in. That's not for everybody, again. If you don't like bullshit for 6 hours, I wouldn't recommend playing this game. If you do, however, and want to get to a really good game after those 6 hours, I wholeheartedly recommend you get desync. I've had a fantastic time with it, played 20 hours of it, probably going to play 10 more in the near future, it's just that much fun. Not much else to the review actually, you can go now, it's about done here.